All right, so we are going to look at some optical devices. And our first one that we're going to look at is the convex lens. And how does it work? How does a lens work to change the location of an image that we are trying to acquire? All right, well, it all comes down to those two ideas we have been emphasizing on light. One, light travels in a straight line. We're going to use the ray property, the particle property of light, but in the ray diagrams to help us look at how convex lenses work. And two, that when light hits a barrier, it refracts. So everything about how an optical device works in the case of a lens has to do with those two ideas. So always keeping those two ideas in mind. So first, let's define what a convex lens is. Now, any lens that we're going to talk about, we're going to make an assumption that it is a thin spherical lens. What does that mean? That means, first of all, it's very thin in the sense that light rays are not going to get kind of messed up inside of the lens themselves. And two, they are from a sphere. So if we took a piece of that lens and we pulled it apart, we could draw an entire sphere that that little piece of lens was taken from. We're also only going to be looking at spherical lenses, meaning that the shape on one side is identical to the shape on the other side. Okay, so they're cut from two sides of the same sphere. All right, so what does this look like? Well, a convex lens looks like a football. It is the shape, but very thin, it is the shape of a football. So the idea is that the edges of the lens bow outwards. Now that's the physical definition. It describes the actual shape. But there's also an operational definition for this optical device. And that is a converging lens. This describes how it behaves. So a convex lens converges light meaning it brings the light to a single point. It brings the light towards each other. How does it do that? All right, well, let's take a look. What I'm going to do is I'm going to sort of blow up a portion of this lens. So here we are at kind of taking that out and I've expanded it for us. Now let's imagine that I have a ray of light that's coming in purely horizontally here. So there's my ray of light and it's coming from some object and that object has a ray of light that comes in at this angle. It has an infinite number of ray of lights, right? We talked about how light coming from an object is um, out, goes out in all directions. So one of them is going to be in that direction. Okay, so it's traveling through the air and it intersects with this optical device, this lens. What happens when lights hit a barrier? They refract. So we have to remember our refraction. Now on the outside here, let's imagine that we're in air. The lens is made of glass. So something, we'll use glass, it could be made of plexiglass, or high, nice plastic. But the lens is more optically dense than the air that the light is traveling through. Okay, so let's go back to our refraction principles. If the glass, the n, the index of refraction of the glass, is more optically dense, the n is greater than the index of refraction from the air. So we know from refraction that that means light will bend towards the normal. But now I'm on a curved surface, so what does that normal mean? Well, on a curved surface, the normal is taken relative to the tangent line at the point of incidence. So here's my point of incidence, the exact point where that light ray hits the lens. I draw a tangent to that, and then I look at the normal force, or excuse me, the normal line for that tangent. Now, if there was no barrier, this light ray would just continue to travel through the air in that straight line path. But there is a barrier, and that light is going to bend towards the normal. Here's my normal, and it bends towards it. So a light ray coming into the top of this lens is bent downward. What about a light ray coming into the bottom? So let's take 
This will remain the same, but I need a little more space. Let's take an area of the lens at the bottom. So there's an area of lens at the bottom. We use the same kind of ray, one that's coming in straight horizontally as I'm drawing it here. All right, well, it hits that barrier, and we draw our normal perpendicular to the tangent line at the, uh, the bad point of incidence, at the point of incidence. There's my tangent line. Let's, let's just redraw that a little bit better. There we go. Now, if the ray of light continued, it would just continue on straight. But going from an area of low index to an area of high index, we bend towards the normal. And the light ray is bent in the upward direction. So we can already begin to see that these two rays of light are coming together. They're converging. But this is as they enter. Does the same thing happen when they exit? So let's look at now this side. Now for the ease of drawing, I am going to draw another horizontal line. So I'm not going to continue this one through. But I'm just going to use one of the rays of light that gets bent at the surface is going to be coming and hitting the inside like this, okay? It's just much easier for me to draw. So we have a lot of rays of light getting bent. One of them is going to get bent and it's going to hit the inside of this surface of this lens horizontally as I've drawn it. So we do the same thing. Here's the point of instance and there's my tangent line. Now if that light ray, oh, I have to draw the normal. So I will draw the normal, okay? So if my light ray did not have a barrier, it would just continue straight. But now I'm going from high index to low index, we know that the light ray bends away from the normal. And that light ray is bent again in the downward direction. And so both upon entering and upon exiting, the light ray will be bent in the downward direction at the top. And in the bottom, a similar thing happens. It enters and is bent upward as it enters and is bent upwards again as it exits. And so in both cases, light rays at the top of the lens are bent towards the bottom. Light rays at the bottom of the lens are bent towards the top. And those light rays converge. And indeed, if we looked at all of the rays of light that enter a convex or converging lens, we see that they all come to a common point. So there's some more properties that we can describe about this lens. So let's go through a little bit of vocabulary for this converging lens. Light rays are coming together at a common point. So instead of drawing the shape of the lens, we're going to represent the lens as a single line. It just makes the drawing a little bit easier. So here's our convex lens. And indeed, it has that outward bow shape. Now, as I bring in of axis that bisects the lens perfectly perpendicular, this is what we call the optical axis. Now let's imagine that I have an object or, a, or various rays of light. Let's go to the various rays of light first. Imagine that I have a whole bunch of parallel rays of light. I have a light source that just strings out like a laser source that strings out parallel rays of light into this lens. Parallel, that is, to the optical axis. And I'm just going to draw four of them on here. Two at the top and two at the bottom. Like I said, the parallel rays of light, that horizontal light that entered the top, was refracted down. The horizontal light that entered the bottom was refracted up. And indeed, all of these rays of light 
are refracted through a common point. That common point in which all rays of light that enter the uh, or hit the lens parallel to the optical axis converge on what we call the focal point of the lens. The distance between the lens and the focal point we call the focal length. Now if instead of bringing my rays of light in here from the left and they all converge to a focal point on the right side of the lens, what if I brought all my light rays in from the left? What would they do? Well, we're still in this convex shape from the left. So we know that we are going to get converging behavior as the light rays go through the lens from the left. The shape of the lens on the left is the same as the shape of the lens on the right because I said it was symmetrical. So how the refraction happens should be similar on the left as it is on the right. And indeed, that's the case. There is also a focal point on the right side of the lens. And that focal point is equal length from the lens to the focal point on the left as it is from the lens to the focal point on the right. So there are two focal points of equidistance to the lens. And that's how we describe a convex lens. Now what if my lens was curvier? So instead of being of this shape, it was a little rounder. I had a rounder lens. How would that affect the focal point of the lens? Well, if I have a rounder lens and I have a light ray entering and that light ray hits that curve and now it's a curvier surface, my tangent line is a little adjusted based on the previous. And it becomes a little shallower. And so the light ray is going to bend a little bit more. And therefore, a curvier lens causes these light rays to come together sooner. So with a curvier lens, we converge sooner. And therefore, we decrease the focal length the distance from the lens to the focal point. With a less curvy lens, we converge later. And therefore, we increase the focal length of the lens. Now, you might recall from our discussion of refraction, it wasn't just the angle of incidence and the difference at uh, the angle of incidence that caused how much refraction occurred. And the angle of incidence is now related to this curviness. But it also depended the difference between the two mediums. So we gave this example as coming from air and going into glass. But what if I take the lens and I put it in water. How does changing the external medium affect the focal point of the lens? Well, I have less difference between water and glass than I do between air and glass. So with less difference, I'm going to get less refraction. With less refraction, it's going to take longer for those right rays to converge and I'll increase my focal point. Similarly, 
if I were to go from the air in our atmosphere to the air in space, where there's no air, I have a much, not much, but I have a lower, even a lower index of refraction. So the difference between the outside and the lens is now bigger. A bigger difference, more refraction occurs, and my light rays will converge sooner. So while we often talk about the focal point of a lens being a property of the lens itself, based on what it's made of and how curvy it is, we are making an assumption, and that assumption is that it is in kind of our typical air atmosphere. So that's okay as long as we understand that. If I move that lens into a different environment, that focal point is going to be affected by the difference between those two mediums. All right. So to recap, a convex lens, which is shaped like a football, converges rays of light to a common point called the focal point. The focal point is a fixed distance between the lens and that point of convergence. We call that the focal length. And with a symmetric lens, there is one on both sides. The property of the lens, how curvy it is, gives rise to the focal point and is often how we define the curvature or the focal point in a lens. That's under the assumption that we're in our atmosphere and refraction is occurring within the atmosphere. We always want to remember that refraction depends on the difference between the two mediums. So that focal point can change if we place the lens in a different environment. All right, convex lens, converging. Good job.